there, I'm Praveen and welcome back to my channel, Exploring Me. On this channel, I explore different aspects of my life, both professionally and personally as a data scientist. In today's video, I thought I would share about a topic that I get asked about probably most frequently, which is, do you need a degree to be a data scientist? Now, if you go ahead and Google this question, you're going to come across a plethora of different articles and many different YouTube videos trying to offer their solutions. The reason that I chose to create a video to share my perspective is that I think a lot of these videos and articles are perhaps overly optimistic in their answers. Maybe they're trying to just write something that's really succinct and they aren't really considering the pros and cons or the various considerations that go into the different career paths you might take in order to become a data scientist. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my honest perspective on whether or not you need a degree to become a data scientist. Now, when you're looking to become a data scientist or looking to come into the field of data science, this is something that you definitely need to come into with some hard skills. This is not really a job that you can pick up the skills while you're actually working. You definitely need to bring in those technical skill sets. How you acquire those technical skills can probably happen in many different avenues, but I'm going to be breaking it down into three key categories. Those three categories are going to be some type of formal post-secondary education, a form of certificate program, or a specific real life experience. These are probably the three main avenues that people consider going down when looking to becoming a data scientist. Now, with each of these categories, whether they be traditional or perhaps non-traditional, there's going to be some pros and cons and some considerations to keep in mind that will really help you evaluate whether or not that is the avenue that you should go down in order to become a data scientist. So that's how I'm going to be breaking down my perspective on whether or not you really need a degree. I'm going to start off with the first avenue or perhaps the most obvious avenue that you might take in order to become a data scientist, which is some type of formal post-secondary education. Now with this post-secondary education, most generally nowadays, I would say that it is some type of master's program and perhaps it could also be some type of specialized undergraduate degree, really depending on the institution that you're looking at. With this post-secondary education, I'm going to be honest, it's probably going to be the easiest in terms of opening the doors of to the field for you and really getting those entry level positions is going to be a lot easier if you have a post-secondary degree. Why is this? You're not necessarily better than anyone else who doesn't have those degrees, but I think it shows a level of commitment and a level of follow through to employers that can really help getting that first entry level position. Another benefit of going through an institution or getting that post-secondary education is that there are a lot of advantages baked into the actual degree. While you're at your institution, you're probably going to have access to a lot of networking opportunities, whether that be through capstone projects, job fairs, or even specific employers coming onto campus specifically to target new hires or new graduates. These are experiences or arenas that you won't really have access to if you're not in those environments. So in order to really break into the field, this can be a huge help or a huge leap forward um, early in your career. So not only with post-secondary education are you, of course, getting that background, but you're also getting those networking opportunities that you might not get in other avenues. With the post-secondary ed education, generally, of course, it might could differ depending on the exact program, but in general, you'll have a pretty robust theoretical background. It's one thing to know how to do something practically, like go ahead and run a t-test in R, for example, but it's another thing to actually know why you're running that and the theory behind making that decision. I don't know why t-test was my example here, but you get the idea. With a post-secondary education, it's generally assumed that you're going to have a really well-rounded understanding, specifically speaking to data science, that will be in statistics, visualization, and of course data manipulation, things on that front as well. So you're going to be exposed to a lot of different topics in the data science field, and then of course through your own professional experience be gaining expertise in a particular avenue of data science itself. With post-secondary education and data science, I would say the major benefits are that you'll be exposed to unique networking opportunities, you'll have a more well-rounded understanding of the field, and you'll probably have an easier way of getting into employers for those entry-level positions. Now, of course, like with anything in life, there's pros and cons. The cons in terms of getting a post-secondary education, I would say first and foremost is going to be the cost associated with tuition. This is huge, not only with cost, 
in terms of the actual tuition you're paying, but costs lost from actually having employment. So you're not going to be able to most likely work during the time that you are pursuing your post-secondary education and perhaps maybe you'll be able to work part-time but there's definitely lost funds in that manner so there's not only a time commitment which may be in terms of a master's one to two years generally in the data science field but then also the tuition and it's going to be quite substantial tuition from what I've seen out there in various institutions and so those are two major cons that you're going to need to consider if you're looking to pursue a post-secondary education. The second avenue that you might go down in pursuing becoming a data scientist is some type of certificate program. With certificate programs, there is a huge range in which they might fall. You might have something that is completely online, something that is self-taught, or maybe even something that is in person with an instructor. Now, with certificate or diploma programs, you're generally focused on very hands-on practical skills, which can be a good or bad thing depending on what you're after. I think I bring a unique perspective to this particular avenue because I'm actually an instructor with BrainStation, which is one of those avenues or institutions you can go to to acquire the practical skills for various digital skill sets, including data analytics and data science. So I don't think, obviously, there's anything wrong with going down this avenue. But just like the other um, example here with post-secondary education, there's going to be some pros and cons. The first major pro is that if you know exactly which skills you're looking to go after, like specifically SQL, you specifically want to brush up on your Python, you're able to seek those specific skill sets out, which is great. So obviously your time commitment is going to be much shorter than that of a formalized post-secondary education. Now, the downside of this is that you're not really going to be able to show that level of commitment that is seen with a post-secondary education. This altogether is going to make it a little bit harder for you to sort of break into the industry than it might be for someone who does have that master's degree, for example. Now, with the certificate programs, you're going to have to also sort of pick up the slack of that networking that is available to you in some other avenues. So if you are able to bring your own expertise or your own work experience that you're really seeking out specific hands-on skills with certificate programs, so sort of pairing that experience and hands-on skills together, you're going to also seek out those networking opportunities, whether that be looking for different clubs that are in your area, different panel discussions or open houses for various uh, companies in your industry. So pairing all of those things together, I think that this is a very valid avenue to go down in becoming a data scientist. You just really have to be aware of what you are and are not getting. And that's really key here with this avenue in becoming a data scientist. The last sort of category that I wanted to explore here is the sort of real world experience approach. So a lot of people will create a sort of robust portfolio of hands on projects that they've done, whether those be passion projects off the side of their desk at their current position, or perhaps even seeking out online resources such as Kaggle to showcase the work that they're able to do. I think with this avenue, it is very self-led so it really is going to depend on your own motivation and how much time you're willing to put into it i mean it's one thing to have to go through a course and sort of hit all those learning objectives say for learning r as it is compared to really knowing exactly what it is that you need to learn and then seeking out those free resources online whether they be youtube videos or perhaps even free online courses so if that's something that you're willing to put in the time to, almost creating your own curriculum, then this might be the avenue for you. Of course, unlike the other two, this is definitely going to be something that is much more cost effective, but it's definitely still going to take a significant amount of time. Perhaps not as much as a post-secondary education, but definitely a significant time commitment is going to need to be made. And if you're not thinking it's going to need that, I don't think this is the avenue for you because this is going to take a lot of dedication. If you're looking to sort of go down this self-taught avenue, I would say that keeping a very robust portfolio online, specifically on a platform such as GitHub or perhaps creating your own blog, really making it visible what types of projects you are capable of and highlighting those things on your resume will help you get your foot in the door. I will say that it is going to be more difficult than it is for those that have gone down the route of a formalized education or even going through an institution for a certificate or diploma program. If you are self-taught, you're really going to be leveraging on the way that you can market the projects that you have done. 
Similar to a certificate and diploma program, you're definitely going to need to create your own networking opportunities. You're going to need to get into the same spaces as those that are in the field and actually make it visible that you are looking to make that career transition. So really breaking it down between the three different avenues, it's going to come down to cost, whether or not that's something that you're able to put in to making this career transition, time, and what type of time commitment is going to be feasible for you if you're someone who can put in that self-directed time or if you're someone who needs that little bit of more rigid structure and as well as whether or not you're going to be able to seek out those networking opportunities. I think if you are looking to get that holistic theoretical approach, post-secondary education is one of the only avenues that will be most valuable. If you already have some type of background that you are coming into this career change with, perhaps looking into certificate programs will be a good option for you. And then finally, if you are someone who is in an adjacent field, potentially you are in computer science or like software engineering, where you think you're going to be able to go through and do that self-taught learning, then that might be an avenue to explore. Ultimately, it's going to come down to what you think you're capable of doing and just being really honest with yourself, which avenue is going to be most fruitful for you. I don't think that if you end up taking any of these avenues that you will become any better or any worse of a data scientist. Ultimately, that's going to depend on you. But hopefully this video was able to help you sort of talk through the consideration, the pros and cons that go with each of the avenues in becoming a data scientist. If I've left out any points and there's something that comes to mind for you, I'd love to hear your perspective in the comments. But other than that, I hope you will consider subscribing and sticking around until next time. Thank you.